Hey there, Navandis here with another Path of Exile guide and this time I'm reviving yet another classic powerhouse of a build, the Solrest Phantasm Necromancer. Now before I talk about the build itself, I'll pause here and ask that you watch the entire video. I mean it, and not because it helps my channel and blah blah blah, but because I've noticed a concerning trend of people just importing the POBs and then having a shit time with my builds because they were missing critical information. Now, I know my guides have probably the best POBs out there, but those alone are still not enough to give you all the knowledge you need to play these builds properly. I can promise you that apart from uh, this mini rant, there's absolutely zero, zero fluff in my guides. Every single minute has useful information which I won't repeat, so if you skip it, you miss it. Ok, now rant over, let's talk about the build. This is the remake of one of the most successful minion builds of all times, the Solres Necromancer. A lot of things happened in the game since I put together the original build, a pretty long series of nerfs but also buffs, culminating with the Eldritch crafting we got in the Siege of the Atlas expansion. This opened up a whole bunch of new options for scaling the build's damage which in turn left more resources to be spent on defenses. The result is a build that can comfortably reach 10 to 15 million single target DPS while having a metric ton of armor and physical damage mitigation, capped block chance for both spells and attacks without using glancing blows, elemental ailments immunity, 40 to 50% spell suppression, a good chunk of evasion and loads of life regen. All this while having an army of minions around you that freeze all but the toughest enemies, keeping them busy and soaking up incoming projectiles simply because they get hit by them instead of you. Now I do believe this level of defenses is overkill for softcore so I've added a more DPS oriented variant in the video description for those of you who are more experienced. Switching between them is quite easy and only takes a few orbs of regret. When it comes to the price tag, all the footage you see in this video was done with gear that cost me around 8 or 9x in total, including the animate guardian items. That of course doesn't mean you'll pay the exact same amount because prices in Path of Exile are always volatile and demand for this gear will likely increase due to the guide driving the prices up. That's how the economy works, nothing I can do about it. However, as always I'm telling you what to buy in the gearing section and there are also trade links in the notes tab of the POB. A crucial thing to keep in mind is that this build doesn't use a 6 link at all. The staff only needs to have 6 sockets, you don't need to link them and the body armor is a 5 link. I paid literally 5 chaos orbs for the body armor I'm wearing in this video and then spent another 30c to craft the Eldritch Implicits. The staff was 1 chaos orb but I do expect its price to jump after this video is released. As a side note my viewers on Twitch got to buy all these very cheap because they saw the build in action before this build was published. As for league starting with this build, it can be done quite easily as the only real mandatory item is the Sore stuff and depending on how popular the build is, the stuff might be more expensive in the first few days but usually drops in price quite fast and when you consider that it is the equivalent of a 7 link weapon, whatever the price is, it's totally worth it. Until you get the stuff, you can easily push the Atlas with Absolution as even that can get you to mid tier yellow maps without any problems. Now let's talk about the build mechanics and how you're supposed to play it. The entire build revolves around a unique stuff, Soul Rest, which says trigger level 20 summon phantasm skill when you consume a corpse. Phantasms are ghostly minion spellcasters which fire a projectile that deals physical damage and pierces all the targets. By default the stuff can summon up to 10 phantasms, but by socketing a summon phantasm support gem in it, you can increase this cap to 20 or 21. Another key aspect to keep in mind is that any support gems socketed in this stuff will affect all 21 phantasms without having to actually link them. You can literally have no links on your stuff and all your ghosts will receive all the bonuses just fine. The number of phantasms summoned at once is equal to the number of corpses consumed, so if you consume 5 corpses, you'll instantly gain 5 new ghosts. Now how exactly do you consume corpses? There are two methods for that in this build, first the devouring diadem helmet which consumes up to 10 corpses every 5 seconds and heals you for 400 life for each corpse consumed this way. Then there's either bone offering or flesh offering, each consuming 5 corpses and granting some massive bonuses to you and your minions. The problem is most bosses don't have adds so there are no corpses and before killing any mobs in the area there are also 0 corpses. To solve this the build automates both the corpse generation and consumption through a cyclone plus cast while channeling setup. Channeling cyclone triggers desecrate which creates 5 corpses and then an offering spell which consumes them in turn creating 5 phantasms. In a few seconds you basically have your entire army up and running. 
Keep in mind that you do not need to hit anything with Cyclone to trigger the spells, which is why you can pre-summon all the phantasms in a boss fight before engaging. On the other hand, if you consume let's say 5 corpses while you already have the max number of phantasms summoned, then 5 of the existing ones will be replaced. This has some important side effects that you'll need to understand to play this optimally. First, replacing any existing phantasms counts as those minions dying. This is great when combined with life from death passive from the medium cluster jewel as it will heal all the other minions for up to 20% of their total HP, which is a massive deal for specters and animate guardian. Also, thanks to Blessed Rebirth, the second passive on the medium cluster jewel, the newly created phantasms are completely immune to damage for 4 seconds. On the other hand, the newly summoned phantasms will not have frenzy or power charges and will need to build those up, meaning less overall DPS. So this means spinning constantly will keep your minions alive, but you'll have lower overall damage. What you need to do is balance these, let's call them stances. If you have 20 plus phantasms alive and your animate guardian's HP is not dropping, you shouldn't be spinning too much. If your phantasms keep getting decimated or you're facing some really heavy incoming damage, then spinning constantly will probably be better even if the fight will take slightly longer. This is something you'll have to figure out on your own with practice and adjust as you upgrade your gear. Now, I said earlier that the phantasms are dealing physical damage, however, it's incredibly hard to scale spell physical damage for minions, so we convert it all to elemental using the unique gloves triad grip with 3 green and 1 blue socket. And no, using 4 green sockets is impossible or better for this particular build. In the end, your phantasms will end up dealing mostly cold damage with a bit of extra lightning. On top of that, we're also going crit, which is possible thanks to the new Exarch Implicit mod on boots. Drop Brittle Ground while moving. This ground effect applies the Brittle debuff on enemies, which increases the base crit chance against them by 5%, which is a huge deal for minions. This should be one of the top priorities when gearing up as the impact it has on your DPS is gigantic. Now, since your phantasms are dealing crits, it also means they apply elemental ailments, chilling and freezing most enemies, but also shocking them due to that additional lightning damage from the blue socket on the triad grip gloves. Leveling this up is quite straightforward, you start off as a witch and for the first levels you can use freezing pulse and frost bomb and basically play as a spellcaster. Once you hit level 12 grab absolution and you're now a hybrid spellcaster slash summoner and with this you can go all the way to the atlas and until you get your sorest stuff. You can also throw in Val summon skeletons and use the Val part of the skills, the one that spawns 50 or so skellies against bosses. As always, you can find leveling setups in the POB under the skills tab. Now, if this is not your first character of the league and you can easily buy some nice leveling uniques, then I recommend getting a Cedar Breath amulet, a pair of Victarious flight boots and a Skullhead helmet. Add a Dying Breath staff, one or two Praxis rings and the classic Tabula Rasa. With the Tabula, I'd say only go for 4 or 5 links early on as going with a full 6 link will drastically increase the mana cost. And speaking of mana, if you do have issues with that in the first few acts, grab one or two enduring mana flasks and don't reserve more than half of your mana pool with auras. Finally, here's the passive tree and the order for picking up the notable passives and the masteries. You'll also find leveling trees in the POB under the tree tab dropdown. Now the build does use cluster juice but it works decently even without. I have included a no cluster variant in the POB and you can also find that under the tree tab dropdown. On the large caster jewel you're looking for Vicious Bite and Renewal. While you could go for Feasting Fiends as well, adding that third passive massively increases the price and the benefit is minimal. For the medium caster jewel you need Blessed Rebirth and Life from Death for the combos I described earlier with resummoning the phantasms and that counting as the old ones dying. In the empty sockets for the large and medium cluster, drop Fortress Covenant and Quickening Covenant for some massive damage and defensive bonuses for minions. While these jewels normally have a downside by placing them in the cluster jewel sockets, that is completely bypassed. And lastly, for the bandits quest, you need to kill them all and get the two passive points. Pretty much none of the bandits rewards apply to minions, while there are plenty of good options on the tree. Moving on to the Ascendancy, we're obviously going with a Necromancer and with the first points take Mindless Aggression for some generic minion damage bonuses, nothing really complicated here. After completing the Cruel Labyrinth, grab Commander of Darkness which further increases the minion's DPS but also provides plus 30% to all elemental resistances for both yourself and the minions. 
Not only will this make gearing much easier, but also help cap the minions resistances, which is incredibly important for the animate guardian and specters. Once you're done with the third lab, drop the points into Bone Barrier, a purely defensive passive which increases the minion's life by a huge amount and adds a big chunk of physical damage reduction for yourself. But more importantly, it also provides the Bone Armor active skill which creates a damage absorption shield on yourself and each of your minions, soaking up to 2200 damage from hits, removes bleeding and provides immunity to this ailment while the buff is up. Just remember to actually place this skill on your hotbar and use it as often as possible. Ideally, you should set it on your left mouse button so it activates automatically when moving around. Finally, for the last Ascendancy passive, you have two options. If you're going with a more defensive variant of the build, which uses Bone Offering, then you'll need to take Mistress of Sacrifice so the Offering affects you as well, not just the minions. For the higher DPS variant, take Plague Bringer, which provides a pretty significant damage bonus against enemies that have a corpse nearby and reduces their damage. Since you are generating corpses every time you spin, these bonuses should be up almost permanently. If you can afford buying a pair of Forbidden Flesh plus Forbidden Flame Jewels, then the best options for this build are Mastermind of Discord, Malediction or Void Beacon. Depending on which variant you went with, Plague Bringer or Mistress of Sacrifice are also good options, basically ending up with 5 Necromancer passives and using the Bone Offering skill. For the Pantheon, the choices are pretty straightforward. For the Major God, go with Soul of Lunaris and upgrade its powers, prioritizing the Chain Projectile Avoidance one. As for the Minor God, you can go with Yugul for its reduced curse effect bonus, or Soul of Aberath for burning ground immunity and some ignite mitigation. Neither is a huge deal, but the Exarch mobs tend to drop a shit ton of burning ground everywhere, so Aberath might be the better choice here. And with that, let's move on to probably the most important part of the build, gems and links. Now, the numbers you'll see for each gem represent level and quality, and in some situations you'll want to keep certain gems at a lower level than max, or quality might not be important for this build, which is why I list them as zero. So let's start with the main skill, which doesn't actually exist because it comes from the Sora stuff and everything we socket in it are support gems. Once again, you do not need to link any of these gems, they just need to be socketed in the stuff. Anyway, we have Phantasm support, minion damage, lesser multiple projectiles, faster projectiles, power judge on critical and increased critical damage. Now, the Phantasm support simply adds 10 more Phantasms on top of the 10 that the staff can spawn by default. In fact, you can get 11 more Phantasms if you take this gem to level 21 through Corruption, so try to get that as soon as possible. Power Charge on Critical support gives the Phantasms power charges, which in turn further increases their crit chance. Lesser multiple projectiles should be self-explanatory, but I know a lot of you will ask, why not greater multiple projectiles? Well, GMP has a much higher damage penalty and is also overkill. With 21 phantasms firing 3 projectiles each, you have more than enough coverage. Adding more projectiles won't really achieve anything as most will just fly out and hit nothing. Faster projectiles directly boost the range for a phantasm's projectiles, greatly increasing mapping efficiency. Against tougher bosses, swap lesser multiple projectiles and faster projectiles with cold penetration and hypothermia for a major damage increase. I know nobody likes swapping gems, but we're talking about a 5 to 6 million DPS difference. Besides, you'll only want to do this against the high end bosses like Cirrus, Maven, Exarch, Guardians, etc. The second setup, which goes into your body armor, is a 5 link one Cyclone linked with Cast While Channeling, triggering Desecrate to create corpses, Bone Offering to consume those corpses and buff the minions and yourself, and Wave of Conviction to apply an exposure debuff on enemies and reduce their cold resistance. If you go for the more DPS variant of the build with a Play Bringer Ascendancy passive, then you'll use Flesh Offering instead of Bone Offering. In the body armor in a 6 socket, but not linked with everything else, is Defiance Banner, buffing your armor, evasion and reducing enemies chance to crit. The only reason we use this in here is because it doesn't fit anywhere else and the body armor will naturally roll red sockets anyway. Then we have a whole bunch of auras and fitting them all in is a bit tricky so please pay attention to this part. Apart from the Defiance Banner which stays in the body armor, there are 4 other auras used in this build. Zealotry, Determination, Purity of Elements and Hatred. Zealotry and Hatred are major DPS boosts, while Determination and Purity of Elements are defensive auras. Determination gives massive amounts of armor, while Purity of Elements provides elemental element immunity, as well as a whole bunch of resistances. 
To fit them all in, we use a couple of tools. First, the Sovereignty Passive Wheel with a 15% Mana Reservation Efficiency Mastery. Once you get that, you can fit two of the four auras and I'd recommend Purity of Elements and Hatred. Secondly, there's the Devouring Diadem Helmet, which further reduces the mana reserved by auras socketed in it and allows you to spend energy shield instead of mana to cast any spells. Thanks to this helmet, you can now add Determination. Lastly, there's the Alls Uprising Amulet with Hatred Has No Reservation, basically allowing you to use that aura for free. Once you have it, the final gem setup will look like this. In the helmet, Zealotry linked with Generosity. Then, still in the helmet but separately and not linked with generosity, you have determination and purity of elements. The reason why you don't link the last two auras with generosity should be clear if you read the gem's description. It boosts the effect of supported auras but causes them to no longer apply to yourself. Hatred will then be socketed into the gloves as having no cost means it won't benefit from the reservation reduction that the helmet provides. Next gen setup, socketed in your boots, brings a few additional minions whose sole purpose is to buff the phantasms and yourself to some extent. First, Animate Guardian, summoned by casting the spell on items dropped on the ground which the resulting minion will actually equip and use. As such, you want to give it gear that grants bonuses to allies, aka you and the other minions. It can use weapons, shields, helmet, body armor, gloves and boots. However, be warned, if the Animate Guardian dies, all its gear is permanently lost. While leveling, only give it random rare items or cheap uniques that you don't need or would otherwise vendor. In fact, I didn't use the Guardian until I was running maps. Later in the game, with enough minion defense and health passives, as well as leveling the gem itself, the Guardian will have over 60k life and plenty of defensive layers, and I've never seen my Guardian's HP drop even once the entire time I've played this build. As long as you keep spinning to generate and consume corpses, your guardian should stay alive. However, just because I've seen this happen so many times before, do not take your animated guardian into halls of the Grandmaster's map. That's a PvP map and your guardian will die and you lose all its gear. Speaking of its gear, the basic, cheap options are Dying Breath Stuff, Victarious Flight Boots, Leercast Helmet, Cospris Wheel Body Armor and a pair of Corrupted Gloves with Curse Enemies with Elemental Weakness on Hit Implicit. After playing with this setup for a while without having your Guardian die and leveling up the gem close to max, you can switch to the more expensive Best in Slot gear. First, replace the boots with Legacy of Fury, which scorches enemies and reduces their resistances. Then, upgrade the weapon to Kingmaker Axe, which provides you and minions with 10 fortification stacks, hurling strike and some critical strike multiplier. You can vendor a non-corrupted soul taker axe plus a heartbreaker dagger plus an orb of fusing to obtain the kingmaker as getting the components is usually cheaper than buying the final item. Replace the gloves with a pair of corrupted vixens entrapment that also have curse enemies with elemental weakness on hit implicit and the body armor doppelganger's guys. Finally, get a Crown of the Tyrant helmet with a green socket for a whole bunch of extra damage for your phantasms. Just make sure you color the socket green before giving it to your animate guardian, the other colors are useless for this build. As a side note here, because POB cannot calculate the bonuses from the animate guardian's gear, I've added those manually in the configuration tab under custom modifier. If you wish to see your own DPS, add or remove those based on what's your guardian's gear. The other minions you'll have in this setup are Spectres and again it's all about support Spectres that buff your phantasms. So you'll want 3 Carnage Chieftains as these will provide frenzy charges to allies massively increasing their DPS. Because phantasms are not permanent minions and they constantly get replaced as you consume corpses, we need all 3 Carnage Chieftains to be able to maintain frenzy charges on all phantasms. Current Shiftans can be found in Act 2, the Old Fields map, and it's not necessary to kill these mobs to obtain their corpses. It's enough to teleport in this area and cast Desecrate, and this will spawn corpses that belong to that zone. As a side note, you'll need to temporarily take the Cast While Channeling gem out to be able to manually cast Desecrate. Then hold the A key pressed and select the appropriate corpse, then cast Ray Spectre. And that's about it. The good part is that once a certain monster has been added to Desecrate's corpse pool, it will appear when using the skill in other areas or your hideout. Anyway, don't worry too much about this entire process since Spectres will die very rarely, if at all, unless you really mess something up. Back to the gem setup, you'll need to link both the Animate Guardian and Ray Spectre with Minion Life and Meat Shield to really buff up the defenses of these minions. 
In your gloves you'll have more of a makeshift setup with the gems being somewhat dictated by the socket colors on the triad grip unique. First there's Sniper Mark, a curse which drastically increases the damage taken by the target and causes any projectile that hits it to split into 4 projectiles. When cast on a target it doesn't expire unless you cast it again on another target so in both fights you only have to do that once in the beginning. This is a skill that you should absolutely use against every single boss or tougher target you're facing such as Metamorph, Arch Nemesis, Harvest Beast, even regular rare monsters. Personally I also throw it on any random mob when fighting against larger packs just because it helps a lot with clearing. Then you have Ice Golem linked with Feeding Frenzy. The Feeding Frenzy buff is a massive DPS increase for Phantasms, however to trigger it you need to link the support gem with a minion. It makes no sense to link it with the Phantasms directly as we'd have to sacrifice an existing damage support from that setup, can't link it with the Animate Guardian and Spectres either as they need their defense supports, so gloves are the only place where you can have Feeding Frenzy. And Ice Golem is the only green minion gem we can use in this build so that explains this wonky setup. In addition to that, once you get a Basin Slot Amulet or Zaprising that causes Hatred to have no mana reservation cost then you can socket this aura here as well. Finally you have two very important gems that will only fit when using unset rings with their gem socket implicit. They are absolutely mandatory for the build so don't use any other ring bases once you hit the Atlas. First is the mobility skill Flame Dash which should be pretty self explanatory. The second gem is Convocation the build Swiss army knife. When used it summons all the minions next to you and provides them a massive life regen buff. This is one of the very few direct ways of controlling your minions that exist in the game and it should be fairly obvious how important that is. You can use it for example to pull your minions out of a dangerous situation like an explosion or heavy degen ground effects. Think about a detonate corpse strongbox or Cirrus's storm or the Exarch incineration move. Using convocation this way is especially important for an animate guardian if you want to keep it alive. You can also call your minions to defend yourself, you'll notice that your minions tend to lag behind if you keep flame dashing so you need to convocate them otherwise you'll find yourself alone versus a pack of enemies. But it can also be used offensively, if you convocate all your minions on top of a monster they'll tend to focus fire on it rather than other random mobs so if you want to prioritize a certain rare or a group of mobs that's how you do it. Lastly you should do your best to get a divergent convocation gem and get its quality to 20%. You'll unnerve nearby enemies when convocating and that increases the spell damage they take from any source including your minions. Ok so now let's talk a bit about gearing. First you'll find trade links in the notes tab of the POB and generally I'll list 3 tiers, basic, mid tier and best in slot. The build uses a few key uniques that are fairly common but the prices can vary quite a bit depending on how far into a league you are, how popular the build is and generally based on the supply and demand for these items. In order of their importance and overall ease of obtaining them your shopping list should be the Solaris stuff, the Triad Grip Gloves, a basic tier on the Animate Guardian, Devouring Diadem Helmet, Cluster Jewels, All Zaprising Amulet, Brittle Ground Implicit Boots. So starting from the top for basic and mid tier helmets you want a rare with max life, resistances both elemental and chaos and maybe some chance to suppress spell damage on an armor plus evasion base. For best in slot it's pretty much mandatory to get a devouring diadem. It reduces the mana reservation cost for auras socketed in it and provides the eldritch battery keystone which allows you to spend energy shield before mana to cast spells. Make sure you get one that has either attributes or resistances for the unveiled mod. For the enchant the best one is increased effect of sniper's mark while a much cheaper and common alternative is increased aura effect for defiance banner. Moving on to your weapon there's really a single choice here, the Solaris stuff is very common and usually cheap unique which you don't need to link. Ideally look for one with a high physical damage for minions roll then get 6 sockets on it and you're good to go. Up next is the body armor and for basic and mid tier you're looking for 80 plus flat life, 80 plus elemental resistances on a hybrid armor plus evasion base. For best in slot add as much spell suppression as you can. This mod can roll up to 34% on body armor so there's quite a bit you can get here. If possible trade some elemental resistances for chaos res as long as you remain capped. Ideally you also want an empty prefix where you can craft up to 8% increased max life using your hideout crafting bench. Once you have a good base like that get it to 6 sockets and 5 links then craft its eldritch implicits. 
For the Eater of the Worlds you want Hatred Has Increased Aura Effect, while for the Exarch the best DPS mod is Increased Effect of Non-Curse Auras from your skills. In the defensive variant of the build, Increased Effect of Offerings is the better choice as it boosts the amount of block you get from Bone Offering. Moving on to the gloves, quite similar to your weapons, there's really a single option here, a pair of Triad Grip. Just a reminder, you absolutely need to have 3 green sockets and a blue one on these gloves. You can use your hideout crafting bench to obtain the required colors rather than looking to buy them directly like that. With boots, the choices are quite simple. This is a slot where you need to stack up as much resistance and spell suppression as possible. On basic and mid-tier ones, you're looking for at least 60 max life, 70 plus elemental resistances, 25 plus movement speed and maybe some dex or strength if you still need those. On basin slot, you want the same stats but with higher numeric values and replace attributes with spell suppression. You can get the dex or strength you need on rings and jewels but spell suppression cannot roll on those items so you want it here. On top of that you absolutely need to get the searing exarch implicit drops brittle ground while moving. This is an insanely strong dps buff as it increases your minions base crit chance against affected targets. You can either buy a pair of boots that has this exarch implicit then craft the regular mods yourself or vice versa buy a good pair of boots with the affixes i mentioned then spam exarch embers until you hit the brittle ground implicit. For the eater of the worlds there aren't that many good implicits for this build but something like chance to avoid being poisoned or increased cooldown recovery rate of travel skills can be useful. Moving on to your belt, quite similar to boots, this is a slot where you should stack up as much life and resistances as possible, including chaos resistance and maybe even some flat armor or evasion. In addition to that, at mid tier you should try and get a Stygian Vice belt with a similar affixes but the added bonus of an abyssal socket. Finally, for best in slot, I recommend another really common and cheap unique, the Darkness Enthroned belt. This item allows you to socket 2 abyss jewels in it and it will boost all their bonuses by 75%. This gives you the flexibility to plug any resistance holes you might have or attributes you're missing, add extra life all while massively increasing your DPS. With basic and meteor amulets is the same familiar story, life, elemental resistances, some dexterity and strength, perhaps even some chaos resistance, as much as you need or can afford of each. For best in slot, get an Alls Uprising with Hatred has no reservation cost, which enables you to use this aura for basically free. The price for this amulet can swing quite a lot depending on how popular slash profitable delving is and how many builds are using Hatred as their main aura. Now amulets can be anointed by talking with the NPC Cassia and using oils drop from Blight Encounters. This way you can have any notable passive from the tree added to your amulet. For this build the optimal choice is Influence which buffs the effect of all your auras. Since you're stacking quite a few of those, both offensive and defensive, this anoint is a very balanced one providing bonuses across the board. Cheaper purely defensive alternatives would be Intuition or Entrench until you can afford to anoint Influence. Moving on to rings, their sole purpose is to help cap your elemental resistances, get as much life as possible and add enough dex or strength to level up your gems. In addition, both rings need to have an empty socket as their implicit. So for basic and mid-tier, look for at least 60 plus life and over 70 total elemental resistances along with some attributes or chaos resistance on an unset ring base. Best in slot rings are similar with mid-tier ones but with an open suffix where you can craft plus 1 to minimum endurance charges. This mod provides a guaranteed permanent endurance charge which you don't need to generate and it's never consumed. Up next are jewels, an excellent source of DPS, life for both yourself and minions and utility. This build has a large number of jewel sockets and minion builds scale their damage particularly well with ghastly eye jewels. This is doubly true when using the best in slot belt darkness in throne. Apart from the cluster jewels which I described earlier in the leveling section, there are two unique jewels which you'll want to place in the empty sockets of the cluster jewels. Fortress Covenant and Quickening Covenant both massively increasing the DPS and defenses of your minions. Fill the rest of the sockets with ghastly eye jewels with flat life, flat physical or cold damage for minions, minions cast speed, minion damage and extra resistances or attributes that you might still need. More often than not you'll be able to cap your resistances using jewels allowing you to get better mods on the rest of the gear. Also keep in mind you can harvest craft a whole bunch of useful implicits on jewels. Chance to avoid stuns is an excellent one and you can easily become stun immune this way. 
And last but not least, the flasks, you'll obviously need a life flask, ideally a seething or terrified divine flask of staunching. Basically, you want some instant healing and bleed removal slash immunity. Then you want a Rumi's concoction for a massive chunk of armor and chance to block spells and attacks. Third is an experimental quicksilver flask of the hair, help you move around faster. And the last two flasks are also defensive ones, an experimental jade flask of the gazelle or some extra evasion and an ample basalt flask of the pangolin, doubling down on armor and physical damage reduction. Learn anything new, Exile?